there's a dangerous dish that can poison you when prepared incorrectly. Everyday food like honey and cashew can be harmful too in certain conditions. You should know these facts before you eat some products. Have you ever chewed the seeds when eating an apple? Then you know that unpleasant taste the seeds have. That's because of cyanide. Don't be alarmed yet. The seeds have a protective cloak covering them. That's why cyanide doesn't enter your system if you accidentally swallow the seeds. Better be cautious though. Even small doses of cyanide can result in rapid breathing and more extreme and unpleasant results. Another danger lurking in your kitchen is potatoes, the ones with sprouts and green spots. Cutting off the green parts or sprouts solves the problem only visibly. The toxic substance called glycoalkaloid may have already spread through the whole potato. This substance turns some parts of a potato green for some reason. It's a sign for you. Eating this kind of potato can cause nausea, headaches, and other consequences. Are you a bubble tea fan? Then maybe you're familiar with cassava, aka tapioca. This is a root veggie, and it's cultivated in South America. It's also often used to make cakes and chips. It can be either sweet or bitter. It's common for root and tuber varieties of cassava to contain toxins. Tapioca must be prepared properly before you consume it. If it's served incorrectly or eaten raw, the consequences are pretty serious. But when it's processed correctly, it's delicious and safe to eat. Elderberries are known as a supplement to boost your immune system and help your body fight a cold or the flu. This medicinal plant needs to be handled and prepared with care too. If you eat unripe berries, they can do more harm than good. Here comes lectin and cyanide. These chemicals can cause stomach problems, for instance. This one makes me sad more than any other thing on the list. And this list includes a lot of healthy products. Anyway, here I spell it out. Popcorn. There are many studies saying that microwave popcorn is harmful for you. First, you consume the chemicals used in packaging. There are also flavoring additives that aren't healthy. Now remember that moment when you open the bag and hot popcorn smelling air goes up into your nose? It can lead to irreversible lung damage. For instance, there's a diagnosis named popcorn lung. A chemical used to provide microwave popcorn with its buttery flavor is related to that diagnosis. What can you do? Choose other packaging options or invest in an air popper. Air popped popcorn has only 90 calories and less than one gram of fat. Yay! Number six is honey. Honey is a sweet liquid made by, I'm joking, but do you know that natural honey is dangerous to eat if the amount is more than a teaspoon? It has a toxin with a hard to pronounce name. To get rid of this toxin, honey has to go through a pasteurization process. Let's move on to cherry pits. If you don't chew or crunch them, you'll probably be fine. Yet, keep in mind that these pits contain prussic acid, and this stuff is poisonous. What about ackee fruit? It's the national fruit of Jamaica, and it turns out unripe ackee contains a poison called hypoglycin. Ackee fruit must be fully ripe if you want to eat it. In other words, this fruit should open up by itself. Once it's ready to be picked up, it'll split wide open. No to the highly toxic pink flesh or black seeds, and yes to the delicious creamy pulp near the seeds. Eating this fruit incorrectly can cause Jamaican stomach sickness. Fugu is the Japanese word for pufferfish and the dish prepared from it. What's interesting about this dish is that it can be the last dish in your life if you don't prepare it properly. This fish contains a very powerful toxin that's very dangerous to humans. A single fish has enough poison to harm 30 people. Because of this, Japanese chefs undergo years of training to get a special license. Despite all precautions and preparations, fugu still sometimes becomes the last meal for some people. Would you take that risk? Perfect ciders, cashews. They can also be very risky to eat when they're raw. You probably get cashews from stores with raw cashew labels, but they aren't 100% raw. Before they find their spots on the shelves, they're processed with steam to remove a toxin called arushiol. Cashew shells contain this toxin. What would happen to you if you ate these nuts raw? A dangerous allergic reaction if you have a tendency to allergies. 
This depends on your sensitivity to poison ivy. Speaking of raw food, raw kidney beans are risky too. They contain a toxin called lectin. This one can give you stomach aches and other digestion-related issues as a bonus. All you need is to swallow four to five raw beans to experience these side effects. Red beans are rich in plant-based protein, essential vitamins, and minerals. Cook them correctly to enjoy these goodies. For this, keep dried red beans on the stove for at least 10 minutes. Boiling them for a shorter time and at a lower temperature can actually increase their toxicity. Beans can become even more toxic than if they are consumed raw. So yeah, a minimum of 10 minutes at high temperatures. Eating too many untreated bitter almonds can cause many unpleasant symptoms and health issues. Rhubarb leaves are a bit tricky too. You can eat the stalk, but don't munch on the leaves. The leaves contain oxalic acid, which ties to calcium. This makes it harder for the body to absorb the needed amounts of calcium. Mushrooms. For plenty of people, pizza and pasta wouldn't be so great without mushrooms. We all know that mushrooms are kind of unpredictable, especially if they grow in the wild. Here are two of the most dangerous ones, the death cap and the destroying angel. Star fruit is a risky choice for people with sensitive kidneys. If you're one of them, you might want to keep this fruit out of your meals. Regularly functioning kidneys can filter out the toxins star fruit contains. Otherwise, the toxin will hang around and cause some problems there. The next product on the list is nutmeg. If you find that nutty flavor super nice like me, hear me out before adding it everywhere. Small amounts of nutmeg are fine and healthy, but if you, let's say, eat spoonfuls of nutmeg, it can cause problems. Even with two teaspoons, knock knock, you get poisoned. Canned tuna can be a lifesaver. It's not pricey, it's a good source of protein, and with its help, you can prepare a delicious meal quickly. No cooking, just lettuce, bread, and a few more ingredients. There you go. How about three to five times a week? And you might experience a side effect called mercury poisoning. Now, this is related to how much and what type of food you consume. Canned tuna contains mercury, and that's why eating too much of it can lead to mercury poisoning. Medical advisors say that every kind of fish has some level of mercury. But that level differs from one species to another. For example, canned tuna has relatively high levels of mercury. Obviously, seafood is a great source of omega-3 and other things that are essential to our brain and good health. To stay safe, experts advise people to choose low-mercury seafood. Here's an interesting fact related to this. To get the most omega-3 fats from your canned tuna, choose water-packed fish instead of oil-packed. In oil-packed cans, the oil mixes with some of the tuna's natural fat. You open the can and drain the oil, and some of the fish's omega-3 fatty acids also get drained. But water and oil don't mix. Water-packed tuna won't lose its omega-3 fats. You can add some oil and dressing after you open the can. Many people try to store different types of food in the fridge, just in case. It seems like the smartest decision to extend a product's lifespan. But it's not that simple. For some foods, the fridge can be harmful. For example, sauces. If the package doesn't say otherwise, it's better to keep them outside the fridge. You can put them in a cupboard that is far from your oven to protect sauces from temperature changes. The worst enemy of coffee beans is moisture. Special oil in coffee beans is responsible for that pleasant and cozy coffee smell. When you place your coffee in the fridge, condensation changes its entire cell structure and makes all the magic disappear. But if your goal is to get off caffeine, maybe it is a good idea to store your beans in the cold. Rumor has it that honey is an immortal food. You can store it almost forever, but make sure to do it properly. Keep honey in a cold and dark place, but don't put it in your fridge. Otherwise, it may crystallize and lose some of its major beneficial properties. Putting tomatoes into the fridge seems pretty harmless, but it's not the best idea. It will make tomatoes lose their delicious flavor because cold air slows down the natural ripening process. Thus, the thin membranes inside of the tomatoes get less juicy. And you don't want your salad to be watery and tasteless, do you? The best way to store tomatoes is in a well-ventilated box or basket at room temperature. If you want to keep sliced bananas from getting brown, use citrus juice. 
just drizzle orange or lemon juice over the cut bananas. Unfortunately, this trick only works for a few hours. The perfect way to store your chocolate is inside your stomach. Ah, just kidding. Keep it away from the fridge and store it in a cool, dark place. This way, you don't only protect your dessert from your sweet tooth roommates, but also keep its attractive appearance. It's not a good idea to put your chocolate in the fridge because the temperature difference will create some condensed water on the surface of the chocolate bar. And keeping it away from the fridge is safer for your teeth. Chocolate tends to harden at low temperatures, which makes each bite more difficult. Don't keep your hummus at room temperature. It doesn't matter whether it's homemade or pasteurized. In both cases, it's not safe. If the hummus is traditional and doesn't contain any preservatives, its lifespan is up to one week. As for unopened supermarket hummus, you can store it in your fridge for about three months and for one week once you've opened it. Let's say you've just baked the perfect cookies. It's time to put them in a jar or container. Unfortunately, the cookies will eventually lose that precious out-of-the-oven feel and keep getting harder and harder as the days go by. But if you add a slice of bread to that same container, the cookies will keep their soft texture for much longer. That's because cookies will absorb moisture from the bread. People usually wrap cheese in plastic packages, but this solution is far from perfect. Plastic wrap attracts too much moisture, which creates an ecosystem for mold to grow and prosper. If you want to protect your cheese from this bitter scenario, sprinkle it with vinegar. But don't use more than a few drops. Otherwise, it'll ruin the original taste of your cheese. After that step, wrap your cheese tightly in wax paper and put it in the fridge. There are no special rules about eggs. It's safe to store them both inside and outside the fridge, as long as their expiration date is fine. It's important to make sure the temperature is stable and consistent. If your choice is to put eggs in the fridge, don't keep them on the side shelf. To protect them from temperature fluctuations, put the eggs deeper in the fridge. Also, experts don't recommend removing the eggs from their package. These containers are actually meant to extend the lifespan of the eggs. Yes, the temperature is not equal all over your fridge. The shelves on the door are the warmest area, for example. And the closer the shelf is to the freezer, the lower the temperature gets. So, if you want to create perfect food distribution inside your fridge, don't skip the specific storage recommendations that are mentioned on some packages. If you store a loaf of bread in the supermarket package, get ready to see some mold in a couple of days. It's better to keep your bread in a firmly closed box with a little bit of salt. This tip will protect it from the mold. Also, avoid keeping bread in the fridge because cold air will make it stale very quickly. But when you need to save bread for a long time, you can put it in the freezer. This way, it'll stay fresh for up to six months. If you want to keep sliced cucumbers from drying out, put them in an airtight container and pour fresh water in it. Don't store them in the fridge for more than a week. As for the whole cucumbers, keep in mind that they rot in the cold air way faster than at room temperature. If you want to keep them fresh for as long as possible, store them outside the fridge. Avocado is a tricky fruit with tricky storage rules. If your avocado is hard and not fully ripe yet, keep it away from the fridge because cold air will slow down the ripening process. Bananas emit high levels of ethylene, which helps avocados ripen faster. So if you want to accelerate the process, put it in a bag with one or several bananas. At the same time, if your avocado is soft and ripe, storing it in the fridge will keep it from going bad. Some people prefer wrapping cut avocado in plastic wrap together with a slice of onion. This tip helps the fruit to stay fresh longer. Another way is to cover it with olive oil. Keep in mind that cut avocado can be stored in the fridge for no longer than three days. Keep your onions and garlic away from the fridge. Low temperatures will cause mold way faster. If you want to keep them fresh for a long time, store them in a cool, dry place. For example, in the kitchen cupboard. And if you don't mind some country house style in your kitchen, tie the onions to one another and keep them hanging. Also, avoid storing oranges and other citrus fruits in the fridge. Unfortunately, low temperatures make these fruits less tasty and less beneficial for your health. You can store them in a fruit bowl on a shelf or kitchen table. Don't worry, this won't speed up their rotting. Just like many other vegetables, eggplants don't like low temperatures. In the fridge, they get soft and lose their good qualities way faster. 
Keep these veggies away from direct sunlight in some dry space at room temperature. If you've sliced an apple, but you don't want to eat it right away, here's a tip. Put a rubber band around the slices to hold them together. It'll keep the apple from turning brown. This fruit will stay fresh and crispy for as long as a whole month when stored in a moisture-resistant bag in a fridge. It's advised to avoid washing apples before storing them, as it might cause spoilage. Never put olive oil inside your fridge. If you've made this mistake before, you've probably noticed those weird white pieces inside the oil. Don't worry, it's not toxic. In fact, low temperatures in the fridge cause water condensation, which looks like unpleasant impurities. It's better to keep your olive oil at room temperature and far from direct sunlight. Watermelons and other melons kept at room temperature contain more beneficial nutrients and antioxidants compared to those kept in the fridge. But once you cut your watermelon, it's better to store it in the fridge. Use plastic wrap to cover the cut side tightly and replace it each time you cut your watermelon. Also, you can cut your melon or watermelon in smaller slices and store them in an airtight container in your fridge for up to one week. Freezing ginger will allow you to keep it fresh for two to nine months and maintain its quality. You can also grate it in advance so you can take one spoonful at a time. This will save you time, especially on those busy days when you need to prepare something fast. Is this safe to eat? We sometimes see strange dots on our potatoes and wonder if we should just throw them away. Here are 10 eat or toss facts. Did you know that every year, 119 billion pounds of food is wasted only in the United States? To put it in perspective, this number means nearly 40% of all food in America is wasted. People throw away food if they don't have confidence in the ingredients. They're being cautious and it makes sense, but what if the food is safe to eat and only looks weird? The first item on the list is beef. When it comes to meat, people naturally get extra cautious. Imagine you buy some raw beef in the store. Later on, you realize it's got some brown spots. If you toss it immediately, hear me out. This is normal. In fact, you can see brown layers also inside the beef. Bright red color equals fresh meat, huh? Not necessarily. When the meat is first cut, it's maroon. If the meat is quickly vacuum packaged, it will keep that shade. But if the meat is exposed to air for like 15 minutes, then oxygen will cause a change in the look to red. The redness can turn brown when the biochemical reaction starts. This can take a few hours. Workers at the grocery stores grind the meat several times a day to achieve that bright red color because they know consumers are cautious about maroon looking beef. If the beef is wrapped in an oxygen permeable plastic, it turns bright red after exposure to oxygen. As long as the meat smells and feels fresh, and if it's been stored properly, it should be safe to eat. Have you ever come across dark lines under a shrimp shell? This one has a similar story to beef. Black lines on your shrimp's flesh are related to a natural phenomenon. They gradually occur after shrimps are taken from the water. Meat is exposed to oxygen, and the blackness gets more visible over time. Here also, the pattern of the animal itself can be a factor. These black lines can be a naturally occurring discoloration on the shrimp. Think of cats. They also have different color patterns, but they're the same in terms of species. Next time, you can conduct a mini experiment in your kitchen. Put a couple of shrimps side by side and observe the mild differences in the shrimp's color patterns. Shrimp will have a distinct bad odor when it's no longer edible, so if it smells and tastes fresh, don't toss it. Should you eat moldy yogurt? That green substance on the surface doesn't look appealing at all, but if you scoop it out, you seem to have clean yogurt underneath. The short answer is toss it. The mold could be seen on the top only, but it has probably gone deep. Not to mention that it'll taste bad. Many molds are harmless, but some produce toxic substances. Green mold is a type of penicillium. Does this word sound familiar? That's the same type of mold used in the antibiotic penicillin. Don't get too excited. Eating moldy yogurt won't magically cure bacterial infections. It only spoils your dairy product. In 2013, there was an outbreak related to one line of yogurts. The company handed the products to stores as usual. 
After some time, they received customer complaints. They said that the yogurt looked like yogurt soup and tasted really old. Turns out that a type of fungus probably released some carbon dioxide. It made the product fizzy and bloating. Blech. The company and another independent scientist both said that this fungus in question wasn't usually harmful to people. Yet, more than 200 people reported becoming affected by it. So, these sorts of things can still happen. You should trust your spidey sense. If you've ever been lucky enough to see some mold in a freshly opened package, reach out to the manufacturer. You'll potentially save others from facing the same scenery by notifying the company about a systemic issue and preventing potential future product waste. Plus, the company probably wants to make amends and either reimburse your sad yogurt with a happy one, or better, they'll give you coupons for free products. Why do avocados sometimes have brown dots inside? Technically, it's edible, but you might not want to eat it. Avocados are a source of many vitamins like C, E, K, and B6, as well as healthy stuff like magnesium, potassium, and more. The avocado works hard to become such a health storage. Nutrients, water, and sugars wander around this fruit. Yes, technically, avocado is classified as a fruit. Anyway, avocados have their own transport channels, like veins. These channels are normally invisible to us. Until something goes out of the ordinary, the avocado may be stored in too cold temperatures for a longer time than it should. As a result, the tissue cells might be weakened and start to deteriorate. Experts say that after the fruit is harvested, if it stays in the refrigerator for a few weeks before you buy it, vascular browning can occur. This phenomenon becomes visible after you keep the avocado at room temperature for a few days. Don't be hard on yourself, it's not because of you. So should you eat it or toss it? You can eat the brown dotted avocados, but you may want to taste them first. They might not taste good compared to a regular one. What about the white area under the potato peel? Eat or toss? This area is also like dark bruise marks, but it's not black. If the outer layer of the potato looks normal, that odd looking white knot is not mold. The moldy potatoes deteriorate. They'll get softer, wrinkled, or squishy. As long as the exterior of this potato appears clean and regular, there's probably no harmful microbial growth inside of it. These strikingly white areas can be shaped due to potatoes being bruised, possibly in the field during the harvesting period. To sum up, you can eat it. There's also an issue of white smears coming out when we slice potatoes. You see the marks on the cutting board? Experts say that some potatoes have a higher level of water and starch content. As a result, your cutting board gets a bit messier than usual. No need to worry about it. I'm going to carry on with another form of potato. Not because I love every version of potato and I can eat it in all meals from breakfast to dinner, but because I want to know. What are those brown spots on potato chips? Should we eat or toss them? Consider these as minor imperfections. They don't affect the safety of the chip. They're there again because of the bruises they get or as a result of frying. Sometimes you see that your garlic is trying to make more garlic out of itself. Yep, it has sprouted. The question is, is it okay to eat sprouted cloves or should you toss them? If the green sprout is in the center of the garlic clove, that's fine. Be aware that the taste of the garlic will be stronger than it usually is. It will still be perfectly okay in a cooked meal since it'll be alongside other ingredients. The taste shouldn't be that harsh. Can we eat an apple with worms? Most people can't even stand the idea of accidentally eating an apple with a worm, but that's a cultural thing. So the answer is yes, we can eat it. After all, worms add a little protein to the fruit. These animals don't carry any harmful parasites. They make their way into the apple. The entrance point of the fruit might have an off flavor since it got sort of rotten in time. Besides the taste, the rotten part is all safe to bite. What might not be so safe is eating the fallen apples though. Those have probably been hanging out on the ground for quite some time. This period might be enough for the harmful bacteria from the soil to sneak into the apple. There were some cases where people experienced health issues by drinking unpasteurized apple juice made from dropped apples. Yeah, the ones that interact with unhealthy bacteria. 
that's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.